I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes, roll call, please. Councilman Scrangy? Present. Councilman Livingston? Present. Councilwoman Cross? Present. Councilman Taylor? Present. Councilman Papistrat? Present. Councilman Mazzo? Present. President Scanlon? Present. All seven here. Thank you. We have uh, Bernice with our own the 19-42. Yes. Bernice. Hello. Hello. Uh, so this is, we have a, one of our uh, dispatchers went out last year on medical, um, so we have somebody that is filling in for him as a temporary right now, uh, so we need to transfer money to cover his salary, um, so that's what this is. I think we did it. We, 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 we did this yeah. third. Okay. We did it because it was during the budget process. It didn't amend the 2019 budget. We should have come down here in January to do this, okay, because this person's been here, okay, but... Uh, just figured it out that we had to do looking through some of the budget information. So when Ken does the RL, it should be backdated to January 1st. Okay, questions okay. or comments? Thank you, Bernice. Okay, thank you. Take it easy, thank you. Sorry to keep you so long. I can do Juliet. Oh, Juliet? Point. Yeah, she's sick, so she's Planning to direct commission to direct Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Oh, I, I can do it. Well, I mean, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I, I can do okay. that later. That later? If you want okay. me to do it now, whatever. But it's only two minutes. Imagine, right? Okay. Sure. Yeah. So ba basically, what the the uh, the change is. Um, in the hazard uh, mitigation plan, or flood hazard mitigation plan, identifies the plan director as the coordinator. This is uh, the individual tasked with the administrative duties of updating the hazard, hazard mitigation plan that the county has, um, coordinating, again, those administrative efforts. It's identified in the, in the city's hazard mitigation plan that the planning director is the point person, whereas in our code it says the planning commission is the entity. And that's not practical as it is administrative duties, again, updating plans, attending meetings. Um, so we're asking for that to be changed from planning commission to uh, director of planning. This does not affect um, anyone who's doing floodplain development. That has to go through the planning commission and any changes to the city's hazard, hazard mitigation plan has to be reviewed by the planning commission. But when Broome County asks who is the city's floodplain uh, administrator, right now it's his planning commission, which again is, is not practical for how it really operates. Okay, is it improper or illegal for the uh, hazard mitigation plan to list uh, the, uh, the planning director as, as the point person and, and then to have the planning commission in this role? Like, could, could the planning commission please take this? Planning commission make the decision and then the planning director approve it? Um, and um, still put them in that role that they're that's lined out in the uh, hazard mitigation plan? I think that it was recommended as part of various updates over the years and I think there was an impression that it was changed in the code and that change never happened. And so when we went back and looked and Broome County's in the midst of updating a hazard mitigation plan, I, it was my impression that it was changed as well, but it just, it just never was. So it's just that technical change. Other questions or comments? Okay, Jared, thank you. Yep. On the check with 19-38. Uh, this is a, the police uh, are over their budget on the gas and uh, fuel expense uh, for the year. Um, so this is an RL transferring, I think it's $1,539 uh, into that account. I can't remember exactly which line it's coming from, but it's coming from the police budget. Uh, I noticed further down on the agenda, um, I think it's also related to um, the sewage treatment plant. Uh, given the fact that we're coming near the end of the month of February, 
Uh, how many further 2018 cleanup budget amendments are we still expecting? Because it's hard for me to answer that question, Gio. I've asked that all the bills be in. Um, this week be our last payment, okay? I can't guarantee you that I have everything, right. okay? Um, last year, uh, w one of our problems uh, that we're gonna switch in next year is the CDBG and home accounts, right. okay? Their contract says they don't have to be in the April 1st, okay? That's gotta change. I mean, I have to have the AUD done by May 1st. First, right, yeah, okay. So we're going to change. We couldn't change it this year. We're just asking them to get us the stuff in a more timely basis. I mean, yeah. Um, but then the contracts going forward, that'll be pushed up. I mean, there's no reason that they can't give us their information up through December by the end of, by the middle of February. Right. Um, I think it's just been their, their mentality that that's when it had to be done. It's just a matter of changing that. Right. Most of the other stuff, um, when I look on Friday, you have everything here that's over budget or will be over budget from what I see. Right. Okay. I can't tell you what's going to come in this week in bills. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay. Because I know technically we can't close out the 2018 budget until all of it. So this, everything's taken care of. Yeah. Correct. Thank you, Chuck. Yes. Is, is there something that we could do in this year's budget process to anticipate some of the um, some of the cleanup changes that you, you may that are likely to be made uh, next year to clean up this, the budget that we set this year? It's it's more about getting the invoices from the vendors on a timely basis, Dan. That's that's the bigger problem. Okay. Okay. And holding them accountable to do it. It's better than it used to be, but. Uh, in the private sector, this stuff happens faster. In the public sector, I try to push a urgency to it, okay, but it's still not to where it should be. I, I, I recognize if, if there's something outstanding that you haven't received yet, no one in City Hall can help that. I mean, that's just a that's that's an accounts payable thing on some other stakeholders position we can't help that i was just saying you know in a broad sense i know these things get kind of trickle down but um still noticing that we, especially with two coming in tonight i was just wondering if there was a general sense of do you still expect any to be the ones that i'm worried about and i think we got them all captured although i got a stack of them today yeah. is utility bills and hopefully all the utility bills we're getting today are for 19 okay. not 18 right okay yeah but um i did see a stack of them come in but hopefully they're for january gotcha. thank you Chuck. any questions or comments thank you chuck down there ro 19 I'll take exactly what we just talked about here. This 4-1, the people that are on COD and some of the other planning boards and different boards that get paid, never turn in their money in time to get paid, okay? So basically, in 18, we paid most of 17's thing. This $400 should get everybody paid up to the end of 18, okay? I've asked them, I believe I have them all, Okay, this 400 will take care of that. And this is literally just, this is the stipend for the board members. Yes, right? yeah. yes. And they, in the past, they wouldn't send their bills in. And I mean, they, it's not a whole lot of money for them, so they never right. sent them in until they, you know, got around to it. Right. I've talked to Juliet. Juliet's talked to all of them. We got all the bills in, and this should take care of it, hopefully. Thank you, Chuck. Questions or comments? <clears throat> Chuck on RL 19-43. The RL1943 is last year, and I can't remember the exact time frame, I think it was in March, we did a, a bond ordinance for the parking garage at Holly Street at $8.8 .8 million. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, we moved over a million dollars in a reserve account uh, to assist in paying for it, and afterwards we did another $1.5 million. So altogether, we have $2.5 million in reserve. Uh, Ken and I, we're on a conversation with our bond uh, council, when was it, last week? And basically, because we have money reserved for this, the bond ordinance has to identify that money as a potential cost of this project, okay? I can't tell you that uh, the city's done this in the past, uh, but bond council uh, basically told Ken and I that when you do a bond ordinance, you have to put all the potential costs associated with it in the ordinance. 
if you read the if you read the actual ordinance, and I can't remember if I actually sent it to you guys or not. I can send it to you because I got it this morning, or maybe I actually got it yesterday. Please, uh, yeah. huh? Please do. Yeah. You'll see that it says our still maximum amount that we can borrow is eight point eight million dollars. Okay, that's not changing. Okay. They just want to know how much the project is going to be. Yes, what the project cost, the total maximum project cost is going to be. Okay, and when you take those numbers, it brings it up to 11.3. But we still only have authorization to borrow $8.8 .8 million. So this doesn't change any numbers, it just changes the, the <laughs> context it, it, of the ordinance? Yes, exactly. Counter. We still have the 2.5 in reserve, 8.8 .8 million in the bond ordinance. We cannot spend on that bond or it's more than eight point eight million. But we don't anticipate using any additional fund balance for those. No. No. At some point when we get a final number, which hopefully we're getting close, we're gonna have to be back down here. Okay, to explain it all to you. Okay. We're not we're working on getting uh, what they call a not to exceed maximum number. And when we get that, we're going to have to come down here and go through it all. Questions or comments? Check on our RL 19-44, please. 19-44 is to amend the uh, bond ordinance on State Street Improvement Project out here. Um, once again, this was a project that originally started in 15, and we had a bond ordinance for $600,000. Uh, last April, I believe it was, uh, that bond ordinance was modified up to $1.9 million. Uh, in the process of doing it and going into, which you guys approved at $1.9 million, when it came to my department, uh, it was put in incorrectly due to some paperwork that was there, basically saying to increase at $1.9 million, okay? So it, in our system, it went from 600,000 up to 2.5, adding 1.9 million. It should have only went up to 1.9, okay? Do I know why the mistake happened? Yes, is it right? Absolutely not, okay? Uh, the actual contract uh, came in, so the total cost of this project is gonna be $2.2 million. Uh, that, from a legal standpoint, you guys have not approved this project at 2.2 million dollars you've approved it to 1.9 okay so we need to bring it up from the 1.9 i have in this uh, ordinance to bring it up to 2.3 the cost right now are two million two hundred and twenty four thousand so there's seventy five thousand extra dollars in here to cover potential change orders okay uh, so that's what this request is to take it from the 1.9 up to 2.3 one uh, people that have been here in the past, I'll come back at, at, at some time and reduce all the bonds that we've completed and get rid of that money so we don't spend it. Uh, hopefully that'll be the same case here. I'll take the 2.3 and bring back the 75,000 uh, at the end of the year. Now to talk about the project itself. Um, yeah, uh, we had pre-construction meetings with Barrett. Um, they will be starting you know, April 1. They have everything good to go. This was bid out or we wanted to try to start at last construction season didn't work out so they are ready to go and one of the conversations that we had with them was this is not just a high profile project because it's in the heart of downtown Binghamton with the signal upgrades at Holly and State and all of the improvements but uh, you know the DOT regional headquarters literally overlooks this project so <laughs> the uh, message was sent clearly to the contractor this is gonna have a lot of eyes on it. This is a priority project, not just the city, but the state. And they're gonna be in in April 1, as soon as they can with the weather breaks, and have this done by you know July. So it's gonna be a, a, a priority, fast-moving project for sure. And you know I feel good about that, that, that DOT is literally over, overlooking it. Make sure that every guy who steps out of a truck has got a high-vis vest on, you know, all of the, the rules and regs. Are they gonna be able to, uh for the, go ahead. And, uh, the traffic pattern that, that's, as it's coming in, because you have the fire station there too, and you have the, a lot of traffic coming in and out of town. Mm -hmm. um, 
how are they going to regulate that? With, with they're going to definitely have to close lanes. I would think so. They're going to have to close lanes uh, when the finished product is in. The fire department's access across State Street will remain unchanged. Um, if you remember when we demolished the uh, walkway between 20 Holly and City Hall, uh, traffic was diverted as part of that and actually didn't go that bad. Um, it was surprising, actually. I was expecting more headaches. There's a lot of traffic, but there's enough capacity um, in the roadway. So um, that was a concern, and, and the fire department's been in on these conversations. And the real, of course, on that same point, it's important to get this thing up in April, and I think they plan on having it done by July 15. Yeah. Uh, the Holly Street project, the garage over there, is, should really start picking up in the July time frame. So. And the money that is going to be, we're, we're going to be reimbursed the, uh, the money for the State Street project, and that's going to go towards the bond. Yes, whatever money we get on from reimbursements pays down the bond. Okay, remind me what the split is, Chuck? It's a different split, uh, Conrad, and I can't tell you exactly what it is, but I, some of it is 80%, some of it was 78%, some of it has the Marcella grant to it that gets 15%, some of it is city cost, okay? Uh, I, I don't have the exact breakout here for you. Mm -hmm. And it's a mixture of federal and state? Federal state, yes. Like the federal would be like anywhere from 75 to 80. The state will kick in anywhere from 15 to 20, but it depends on their Marcello money that they how much they get at the end of the year they share at that point in time. Is that how you say it, Ken? Marcelli? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's Marcelli. Yeah. Marcelli, there you go. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Um, <clears throat> Chuck, that, what, what's driving that difference between the 1.9 and the 2.1, 2.2? Isn't that the I think the, the street lights, the traffic lights? That's what most of it is, Geo. Right. from what I understand, is it's the streetscapes and right. street lighting. Correct. Which makes up most of that. But didn't that come down to us already? That was, if I'm not mistaken, that was the... Uh, I think it was the grants and stuff no, to accept the, the... it wasn't the grants, it was uh, for the engineering portion. Yeah, you're probably right. Because I know what, what's come down here. Right. Yeah, no, I the right. The things yeah. that came down here was the two bonds right. uh, to accept two different grant <laughs> types right. and to, uh, pick, to assign the engineering portion to it. Right. So my, my question is, though, if there were two bonds that have already come down to us, why are we increasing the overall amount? When we, when we came down and brought it up to 1.9, that's what we thought would be the maximum amount, okay? After all the bids came in, the actual maximum amount right now is 2224000 with the additional of those uh, streetscapes and the street lighting. And it makes sense to do those projects today rather than two years down the road yeah. because the efficiencies and you don't have to pay mobilization two or three times. You don't have to, I mean, you have the people there to do the work. That's going to be a finished product at the end of the day. I think when this is all said nice. and done, you have the finished product there and you're going to have the finished product over on Washington Street and Holly. I think that whole area is going to look pretty nice. Okay, Rand, you got a good looking downtown? The, the street. Right. Yeah, the Better yet, you're going to make uh, downtown great again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, uh, Chuck, in here it says a uh, breakout of the grant money will be available at the workshop. What's this workshop? I, I was not able to get the complete breakout for you, okay, due to Ray not being on Friday. Oh, the work session, okay. Yeah, yeah the meeting here. So this is an expedite, so we will be able to see a break out of that in We can, yeah. Thanks so much. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Chuck. Both of these have to go, these ordinances have to have public hearings. Correct, Ken? Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Pearson. Good evening. Good evening, Chuck. We come before you tonight. We have two requests for transfers. One of them is 2018 budget, and the other is 2019. And the first one, I have the certificates of resolution here. We are asking for an increase to the budget appropriations for gas and heat 
and also for the permits, fines, and fees. Uh, the board is requesting $5,250 for gas heat expense and $1,450 for permits, fines, and fees. The $6,700 balance to be taken from electricity. Questions or comments? Okay, the truck yep, and that one we have to be expedited. It's 2018 business and trucks, trucks kind of holding things open for as short a time as he can to close up the year. Okay, so. we're on the RL19-40. And the other one is 2019 budget. We had an employee in 2017 that worked for us for four months and has filed unemployment. And what we normally do is just put $100 on that line to hold it open. So for 2019, we only have $100 and it ends up being $54 every two weeks, I believe. So we're probably going to need additional on that line unless she suddenly finds employment. So we're asking for $1,400 to be added to the unemployment insurance line to cover the potential exposure to be taken from contingency. Questions or comments? Yes, Councilman Scrooge. Thank you. Uh, Charlie, thank you for, the name is wrong. Thank you for coming down tonight. Um, while we're on the while we're on the subject of the uh, well, while we're on the subject of uh, the sewage treatment plant, uh, in Sunday's press and sun, there were job postings for a superintendent and assistant, a superintendent. Yep. Um, I know with regard to respective budgets over time, I believe the assistant superintendent has been a line item in the budget, but has been vacant for a while. So my question is, what are those related to? Is that with the retirement coming up? Is that, yes. um, and then with regard to the assistant, what is actually- That will be a new hire. It's been funded in the budget for quarters two through four we didn't fund the first quarter so right. they are now looking to fill that and is that, this, is that because we're getting to the point where this thing is going to be yep. coming online truly? yep okay, so that's that's coming in line, so sure. okay. thank you charlie you're welcome Remember the personnel committee i just came up here just in case it was something that was <laughs> I mean, beyond what you want to add anything no i don't want to thank you very much yeah. thank, thank, you. Take the <laughs> thank you thank you very much on to megan Hello. Okay, this is um, another side lot program property, um, 26 Stuyvesant. Um, formerly, there was a fire damaged house that was there, a fire damaged property that the city demolished. We received an offer to purchase from Jeffrey Kent um, with a plan to use um, a proposal to use half of it for parking and keep the other half green space. Questions or comments? Yeah, for parking for his own private home? Uh, he owns um, three properties on that um, block right now. Okay. So he is, um, he owns two across the street and one that's adjacent to it. The planning department is recommending that he merge this lot with the property that's adjacent to it and use uh, parking for that property. Okay, so uh, he's got one of the properties and he needs space that keeps cars off the road. Yeah. Absolutely. Other questions or comments? Are there any outstanding issues with the neighboring properties that he owns? Code enforcement issues? Yeah, I had uh, Tom look into it and when we get these, I circulate them to Tom and the code department, Tito on planning. Um, Tom was originally um, a little bit, had a bit of a hesitation and we had talked about it. That block in general is kind of problematic and I think that was his initial reluctance. Um, but he went back and talked to his code staff and I guess got somewhat better input on it. The property that's on the corner of Stuyvesant off Holly Street um, recently has had more work put into it. It's one of the nicer properties on the block. Um, so Tom, Tito, and I revisited it and they they felt comfortable moving moving forward with it. So there are no outstanding issues or he's working on it? 
I don't know if there are outstanding code issues. They all, yeah. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Those are the other properties that he owns, yeah. Right. Um, I think I, I, I'd be interested in seeing uh, in seeing if there are any outstanding issues. And, you know, I don't, I, I would hesitate selling a lot to a landlord, albeit if it's just for, for parking, if they are a landlord that isn't necessarily that compelled to invest yeah. in the properties that we're trying to help them better. Conrad, are you, are you aware of something that's going on? No, I'm not aware of anything. I just know the block. And I know that there are a lot. Of, I can't. I can't picture the actual addresses, even from the from the photos. But I know that there are a lot of problem properties around there. Um, so if there are, you know, outstanding code issues that need to be uh, that need to be addressed, this seems like an opportunity for the city to say, "This sounds like a fine deal, but you know, you know, we're not going to sign this deal with you unless these." This yeah. is figured out. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you know that what? makes I a lot think, of sense. Kenner, yeah. Jared, are, are these guys looked into when they're trying to buy property? I mean, is there anything that cross check for code enforcement? Normally, they don't. No, they don't sell something maybe, uh, when maybe. there's code. When, when, code. when we get an offer to purchase before it actually be, comes before ENA, uh, as there's a portion, then right. it goes yeah. to as. Uh, right. Megan said it yeah, goes to the code, it goes to planning, it goes to the assessor's office, they respond back. And I think what Megan said is initially Tom did have some concerns, uh, they went and looked, said he thought that they were being resolved, but this is not being expedited, and, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, we'd certainly yeah. look into it again. But usually it doesn't come to us in, until we have that recommendation. Okay. That's what I thought. Right. Yeah. Yes, if, if, if it's part of the, the process to put together that history of code infractions, is it possible that you could forward that to city council when we get? Uh, no, what we get it's really this? just a you know a line that may say, you know, I have no concerns, or they may talk to Megan, or they may. I don't. We don't get a printout list of, of, of something on a property. But the, cur the current director of code enforcement, Tom Costello, has signed. Correct. Say, they would. They would get yeah. back. They may get back to Lee right. or to Jess, who right. sent it out, and just it may be a call saying, "I don't have any right. concerns." Lee would mark that. It's usually just a yes or no. Like we had um, an offer to purchase yeah. last year for Mary Street that the code department suggested we we turn down for that reason. There were issues around the the property or the owner. Um, that had submitted the offer to purchase. So they'll normally give us like, yes, this code, this property owner is in good standing or no, we, we would recommend not going through with this sale. Um, but I'm, I'm sure I can ask Tom, that Tom and see if there are any yeah, open I'd code like violations. Yeah, i details and I'll, I'll look into it myself. Any other questions or comments I'd on this? Thank you, Megan. Thank you. I'm the jury. Yes. Anyways, so. That's not expert. Okay, so at the last meeting, I said that I was 90% sure that we've taken the home contract uh, to City Council for Family Enrichment. This represents the 10% that I was not sure and, and went back and double checked it. So um, this is a 4.1, 4, excuse me, $4.2 million project. Went back, checked the legislative database and, and it had not come to City Council to authorize the, the home uh, Chodo set aside for the project. Um, the uh, council has approved the sale of the property and uh, their attorneys are working with ours to uh, get all the paperwork that's needed for it from the state and uh, again they look to start in the you know spring summer is what the last uh, they, they told us questions or comments i, I accept your humble retraction <laughs> it is it's, it, that's why nothing's ever a hundred percent right so but i did look i think i looked at night yeah, it could be 99.9 nothing .9. Okay. Just Councilman uh, Livingston requested we talk to um, Carol Lord 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 Clayclip Clayclip regarding some. Go ahead. Thank, thank yeah, you. thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, uh, Lori Cliff contacted me and said that the the RL that I submitted 
uh, prior to the first work session of this, this year, uh, that she's done a bit of research and she's ready to bring it to council, so she said I should just ask the council if, if we could invite her to come in and share her findings with us. Sure, why don't you put that on schedule for uh, next, next meeting, Jess, if you would, please. Mr. President, you're welcome. And if any legislation from Jessica. Oh, hi. Um, so, as, I'm not sure if you all received it yet, but I sent out a draft agenda. Um, so, we'll be passing an ordinance <coughs> to sell 99 Broad Avenue. Uh, we'll also be passing six uh, ter renewal term agreements um, for 2017 term agreements with the following firms McFarland Johnson, Keystone Associates, Griffiths Engineering, and Advanced Testing Company. These are all for like engineering projects through Ray's department. Um, and then we'll be doing a few different resolutions for CWG funding. Um, one for the BLDC for $163,000. Uh, another one for Metro Interface for $16,000 for their Binghamton Home Ownership Academy. The next one would be the first Ward Action Council for $85,000, and the last one with CDBG would be Achieve for $3,500. And the last two resolutions we'll be passing is an agreement with New York State DOT for emergency assistance, and the last resolution would be an agreement with the Broome County Youth Bureau for funding and $3,500 for the Summer Fund Youth De Development Program, and then the other, piece, the other four pieces that were expedited for tonight. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. If there's nothing else, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second.